The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, good morning, All right. everybody. Here we are. We are here for the first official Wild West Hacking Cast of the year. And uh, we want to welcome Josh, our, our first presenter. Hi. So um, we're glad to have you here, Josh. Thanks so much. I'm excited. Thanks to everybody um, who's tuning in right now. We're extremely excited to have you also. Uh, we hope your new year is starting out amazingly. Um, mm -hmm. so, if, you're, so if you're new to us, we are using the Discord um, for a for our chat um can somebody put an invite in the go to webinar link oh yeah yep. you got That's it ryan right here yep sweet cool, cool. Oh, that cool. reminds me you gotta get your uh if we can get your slides josh yeah let me try to do that um gotta export them from here so like Velda was saying, we're in the live chat channel. Um, Zane put a nice GIF in there. We we are a huge fan of GIFs. We also want to say welcome or happy time zone because we have people joining us from all over the globe because we're global, we're worldwide, we're international. Um, it's just what we do here. So um, again, welcome. We're in the live chat channel. We're a little bit late starting. 2022 has thrown us all into a crazy Decepticon, Omicron, crazy pandemic still happening. Still a thing, unfortunately. Um, and I lost power last week. That was real fun, living like a pioneer woman, still doing part of it. But um, we welcome everybody to the first hacking cast of the year. We're a little rusty, gotta be honest. <laughs> we'll get back to it. It feels like it's been two months since we've been on here. I know. <laughs> it yeah. does. Well, we haven't been on since last year. So. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I've, I've got the stare down. Like. <laughs> yeah, you definitely it nail it every time, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> So, Josh, where are you from? Tell us a little bit about you. I am from uh, Missouri, um, Central Missouri. So I work uh, remotely, or I have been for about six years now. Um, right now, I am uh, I'm at Swimlane, uh, which is a SOAR uh, company, uh, kind of a startup. You know, um, uh, before that, I was at uh, CoFence or, or FishMe for a few years, and then uh, before that, did uh, digital forensics and incident response for a um, higher education. Uh, university for several years uh, before that, like IT and system administration, and it keeps going. But yeah, that that's kind of the relevant security expense. I've been, oh, probably been in security, yeah, for ten years or so. Something like oh, that. Very cool. Three of three of five of us are Midwesterners. So hey, oh, I... awesome. <laughs> where are you, where are you all at? Nebraska. Oh, okay, not too far. Thank you. Making, I'm making. in Virginia. Ryan is in Florida. He's a yeah. lot warmer than me. Um, he's the warmest. Yeah, it's cold here. Oh, man. It, I, it was like sick. So in Missouri, if you've never been, um, you know, it'll be 70 one day and then 10 the next. So uh, that that happened uh, about Josh, around Christmas. So. Weather. Yeah, man, it, it is it's fluctuates too much. Yeah, that seems really kind of unreasonable of Mother Nature to, <laughs> to do that to you guys. Wait until it, like in February, March, it'll snow, <laughs> you know, and then the next day it'll be 70 degrees. It's, yeah, just insane. Yeah, that sounds like it. You know what? We would love to learn where everybody else is from, uh, what part of the world are our attendees from. And Josh, no pressure, but we had about, I think, 1,800 people register for this webcast. Oh, awesome. So, no pressure. No, 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 yeah, no pressure. No, no pressure. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. That, that's a lot. Yeah, I'm glad that people are excited. You know, I think um, I think we'll learn a, a little bit about you know MITRE and some some issues, and as well as uh, those open source projects. So I, I love coding and I love uh, creating open source. So um, we can talk about that all day. Very cool. I just the gifts. It's the gift oh, yeah. for me. Like yeah. they just crack me up. Uh, 
Jake, that was like a perfect representation. <laughs> that is my a summary of our season this year. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so we have New Hampshire, and then we have Cyber Guy CA who says better than the igloo I live in. So obviously Canada, but what yeah. part? Looks like Zane is in uh, Philadelphia. I, a fun story, I actually did uh, reenact the Rocky scene a few months ago from Rocky, ran up the steps, and it was surprising how many people were doing it and recording themselves. Um, and then there was like just the regular people that were just working out, running up and down the stairs, but I did the whole Rocky scene. I watched it first because I had to prepare and get into the part. And so I did the whole like kicking around at the top. I'll have to share that with with you guys one day. It's <laughs> we were in the green, down and green sweatpants. The driver. <laughs> <laughs> I I was really nervous that I was going to trip up the stairs, so I went very slow. <laughs> so, did you have the headband? You had the headband. No, I didn't. Oh, but it was, it was it was pretty. It was pretty epic. I, I thought. Is, anyway. is that in Philly? Like, I, yeah. I've never been. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. You oh, go to the thing that they call the gauntlet to actually get to it. Yeah. Uh, and so we, we did that. And then I ran up the stairs. And it was really, really, really hot that day, too. Um, so it was. But I was with my best friend, and so we were just completely cracking up the whole time. Um, so it was just a blast. Girls trip. So wow. well, we've got some good good places here. So we've got New Brunswick, California. That was where Cyber Guy CA is from. Uh, the Bay Area of California, Seattle, uh, Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah, neighbor. <laughs> yeah. How do you? How do? Well, do you usually have a lot of international? We, we do. Okay. We, yeah, I, I assume so. You know, I guess Calgary, I guess Canada is international, whatever. <laughs> Close enough. So our, our so friendly neighbors, they to the north, to New the Brunswick, north. Canada, right? Yeah. We have a couple of people that work for. Oh, there's yes. one from Myanmar. Mm. That's cool. Norway. Norway. Oslo, Norway. Nice. North Carolina. Carolina Panthers. Trinidad. Ooh. Oh. Mm. Uncle Beppy, I bet you it's so yeah. warm there. I'm so jealous. Oh, Milan. Oh, Milan, Italy. Mm. New friend. Pittsburgh. Oh, nice. We got Atlanta. Speaking of. I don't know if you're a Georgia fan, but congrats on the national championship. That was yeah. Fun. Yeah. I'm sorry to all you Alabamans. Mm, are we though? Well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as far as like the college football thing, are we really sorry for them? I'm not. Oh, San Diego waiting. Yes, we'll see you. It's waiting. He's here. Speaking of San Diego, what's happening in May in San Diego? Where do you want to be? Uh, way west. Way west. Amen. Are you coming out, Josh? Uh, no, no. With the with all the Omicron and everything, yeah. yeah. But my we have a little one, so it's we're trying yeah. to uh, not not go out as much as possible. Well, yeah. Plus, we she keeps are, us busy anyway. We so. are looking forward to the event. Um, we're super excited um, about it coming up. Um, if you're not familiar with it um we can certainly post a link here I already did. Uh, oh and look at that. that so good she's on it we have all kinds of fun things going on um i do want to mention our call for papers and call for tool shed ends on the 15th of, yep. of january um if you are interested in speaking at the event uh you can do it in person or virtual um as well as host a, a an open source tool uh, give us a demonstration. Uh, you can do that in person or virtual. Um, so please um, check out, Megan, again, the innkeeper posted um, 
the link for that. Um, so please uh, feel free to, to take a look, um, make your submissions. We'd love to host you. We got a lot of fun things planned. Um, Derek Rook, who's a good friend of Wild West Hackenfest, will be one of our keynotes. And then we have Jeremiah, and I'm losing his last name. Anybody got it? Fowler. Yep. And he will be, they will be keynoting. Um, we also have some other friends that will be there with us. Um, so please take a look at our website. Um, we have some awesome, awesome training classes. Uh, that are coming up with the with the conference and you can take those in person or virtually um, mm -hmm. but we have some new additions too that we're really excited about um, so if you have a uh, opportunity uh, go over to our website take a look but just a reminder too we have some awesome 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 anti-siphon training classes coming up too so um, if you haven't had a chance to check out our website please do so um, yeah Okay. Actually, at a, uh, the the tool shed, I had two last year that that were there. Um, unfortunately, right during my presentation, I actually had a kidney stone, and so I had to go to the hospital, which was oh my back. gosh! Yeah, That's... yeah. There was luckily they were recorded, right? But uh, at the same time, it was like, holy crap, I gotta go, and yeah, <laughs> spent the day in the hospital. It was, it was so, don't ever have that happen. Yep. Yeah. What you present um, on, Josh? Uh, I think it was a so it's been a while. So uh, two tools. One of them was uh, Sock Faker. It's S O C dash uh, Faker. Uh, it was around faking security data. Uh, as a Python package that you could actually um, generate like fake Windows event logs or fake uh, Elastic data. Yeah. Um, and then the other one was. Uh, it may have been, yeah, I think it was uh, what we're going to talk about today, but not in this form. It was just like a quick, you know, 20 minute video about PyAttack. Um, and so we'll, we'll go into a little bit more detail about that today. Fantastic. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. I actually so, submitted, uh, I think, two two CFPs and uh, two for Toolshed this year for Wayless. Right. So, yep. Excited. It, it's a great event. I mean, both of them, you know, one in the. Uh, Wherever it's at yeah, <laughs> in the fall, yeah. Yeah, uh, like, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was an awesome <laughs> event too. So all virtual. I can't wait to make it out there, but I know. You know for the time being, I've only ever gotten to the, doing with doing. the one that we had in Reno, which was so much fun. Uh, mm -hmm. oh, I bet. we finally got to, you know, I got to finally meet Ryan in person and Jake in person. Jake wasn't even with us yet, really, officially. Not yet. Uh, he just got roped he in. Was to, there. Yeah. I was he, there. Yeah. He just got roped into like running the camera and like he was amazing. All the stuff. Hanging out so, in the airport. And then we got or, stranded at the airport. That was fun. <laughs> oh no. That sounds yeah. like a fun story. So, Jeez. <laughs> yeah, so it was kind of like Survivor. So we're now now we like talk about everything. I think I tell him a little bit more than he wants to know a lot of times. He's like, ooh, this is weird. We're like old friends now. <laughs> really close, really close. Um, Velda, did you have a question of the day today? Well, I was just looking for it. Oh, you don't have it? I did it. I was preparing for it, and then I didn't. I mean, do we want a question of the day? Yeah. I mean, sure, I why not? Question of the I thought day. this one was really good if I can find it, because I don't. We got someone who uh, uh, is attending from Pakistan. I think wow. that might be the winner. Wow. wow, that's fantastic. Nice. The distance. Yeah. The distance winner. That's crazy. Sorry, I didn't mean to kill the conversation with asking the <laughs> question of the day question, but that's just what <laughs> that that's what I'm here for to make it weird. <laughs> Um, Before we went on there, we were talking about snowstorm problems, uh, blizzard yeah. problems, and that uh, Megan, you don't have hot water right now. No. And I was I was starting to share a story about my uh, blizzard story, which was back in 1998, where I'm originally from in Maine, and I remember it was so severe. It was like a, a snow slash rain, and everything froze over. Yeah power lines down everywhere and it was so severe that the vice president came up to maine to, wow. to survey the area and uh 
I remember the story was that the the power local utility company had to scold him because he picked up a downed power line in the street somewhere oh, wow. while he was doing oh, his little tour thing. Um, so there's a nice useless trivia is that uh, <laughs> the, the vice president got scolded from uh, the power company. He's lucky not, he was uh, able to be scolded and it wasn't. Oh like, my gosh. Was well, I think that was the whole point. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was the point of the scolding. Yeah. <laughs> like you, you, you almost just a, died. A downed power line. Yeah. I was just thinking, so that made me think of like other useless thing trivia, like the line of succession. Like, so what is it? The Speaker of the House next? If like something were to happen to the president, I can't, I can't remember the the actual because the president vice. Maybe somebody in Discord knows. It might be Speaker of the House after the vice president. Probably doesn't know. I think yeah, you're I think right. That makes if, sense. if it was yeah. just the vice president, though, they would just appoint a new vice president, I think. Oh, yeah, that's true. But like, yeah, the line. That makes sense, right? Okay, I have a question of the day now. Okay. Okay. We fill time. We're good. The age we do this activity the best is 24. What is it? Mm. The age we do this activity the best is 24 so you're 24 years old what is it drink think back drink <laughs> yeah it's a lot farther back for me than others but hmm. the age any guesses work the age we do this activity the best definitely not work <laughs> um the best you have a lot more energy i'm guessing, I'm guessing drive yeah. because your insurance work. drops at 25. Yeah. Travel. Oh, goodness, guys. We already have a winner. Sleep. What? Sleep? Sleep? That is our answer. Think Sleep? about it. Think about it. You don't, you're out of college. You're just getting out of college. You're getting your first job. You don't have a mortgage, probably. You don't have kids. You're probably not married. The Toro says lie. Right? Yeah, I'm going to throw a flag on <laughs> Yeah, like when I was 14, I could sleep for like 12 or 14 hours a day. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would say teenagers like nail it in the sleeping department. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe it's like, not quality sleep. On, on uh, go to yeah. webinar saying that it's definitely the president, the VP, and then the speaker. Hey, I was right. Look at that useless knowledge that I had. <laughs> realizing the downsides and there's the also some questions about the uh the recording for today so we are actually live streaming right now on youtube and i can drop that into the live chat there it is and that is also where you're going to go to get to the recording immediately after we end the webcast it'll be available there um, to there will be some uh, that... i'll have to edit it down a little bit um afterwards and then I'll probably add some chapter points for pre-show and, and then the presentation, et cetera. Um, but it'll be there. And yeah, for those again. of you that are live, that are on YouTube live streaming, if you need a certificate of completion, you do need to register for the through GoToWebinar in order to get that. And when um, tomorrow around this time, you will, for those of you that are joining us via GoToWebinar, you will receive a certificate of completion that you can use for CPE credits. There's, you'll get an hour. Um, because this actually isn't the content we forgot to say at the beginning. We show oh, up early. You show up early, and we show up early because you show up early. It's this vicious cycle that we call pre-show banter um, that we just love. And it is. we're a little rusty. We should have said that at the beginning, not at the end. <laughs> we must have vacation brain, sick brain. No, Mine's not no going to blame you all on cold. It's frozen. It's all frozen. So I just want to let everybody know um, we don't have a hack and cast scheduled, but I, well, let me take that back. I think we have a hack and cast scheduled for next Wednesday, um, January 19th, and it will be if it all comes to fruition. So please keep an eye on on our web website. It will be very entertaining because it will be the lovely Mr. Kevin Johnson and oh me from Secure Ideas. So, that would be awesome. if you like Nathan and Kevin, please watch our website. We'll, we'll send out an email um, as well, but they're supposed to be sending me an abstract 
uh, for next week, for next Wednesday at the same time. So um, just FYI, we have some other ones. We have a lot of lot of things scheduled um, as far as as hacking cast. Um, so please keep an eye. Continue to keep an eye on our website. I'll put a link in the Discord Kevin, channel to the hacking Kevin's cast. Awesome. Yeah, like I met him uh, 2015 or whatever. I think it's Show Me Con. He had, uh, he got, he let me uh, wear one of his uh, uh, stormtrooper helmets or whatever. Um, <gasps> just a really awesome guy. They, like, he he's, is. you know, he's crazy. a great presenter too. He is. His, uh, but he his, hates his it. His joke is, you know why? You know why um, Walmart's never been hacked? Hmm. No. They're not a target. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's cool. But um, it's a dad so, joke. So Congratulations! Does that joke you can you can yeah. <laughs> answer beforehand? <laughs> Sorry, ruined it. <laughs> well, we are I got, right. I got another one for you, Velda. So, without further ado, uh, we will let Josh okay. take over. And or did you have something else to say, Velda? Ryan did. No, Ryan did. Oh, I was gonna have a joke. I'll do it quickly because oh, I, okay. I already brought it up. Where does a dog go to get a, a new tail when they lose their tail? A retailer? A retail store. Oh. A retail store. Sorry, when people yeah. actually... Now, now we can start the broadcast, we're done. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, Josh, we'll, give, we'll turn this over to you. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for, for joining us today, and we're super excited to have you. And uh, make sure to keep an eye uh, on our website. We'll be back. Uh, after the talk. Awesome. Thank you all. Thank you for having me as well. Um, okay, let's get started. Uh, my name is Josh Rickard. I am um, kind of focused my career mostly around blue team and digital forensics and incident response. Um, I kind of have a background ranging from um, traditional, you know, IT or help desk um, to IT support to system administration. Um, all the way into um, doing just regular security analyst uh, type position. And then I specialized in digital forensics and incident response, more the digital forensics side. Um, after that, uh, I actually wrote some open source tools and ended up releasing them online, which then um, got some attention of, of a company that uh, ended up hiring me because of that. Um, so I continued doing that for about three years, and then um, I was uh, kind of in the management phase and uh, of my career and uh, didn't really care for it too much. So I actually moved over to a different company and now um, uh, to do security research um, and do a lot of those open source tools and, and automation. Um, now uh, I'm a security solutions architect uh, at Swimlane, a, a SOAR company. Um, like I said, I love to automate all the things, right? We, I automate things from uh, turning my lights on when I get a, uh, it'll actually flicker my email. Uh, when I get a calendar reminder like 10 minutes before an email uh, or, or a meeting, my lights will actually flicker. Um, uh, all the way down to just automating posting to social media. Um, so I love to automate as much as possible. Uh, I also call myself a open sourcer. Um, really, it, I, I just love providing back to the security community uh, to provide tools and, and different, a uh, lot of code, a lot of Python, um, provide it back as much as possible. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at MS Administrator. It stands for Microsoft Administrator, not Miss uh, Administrator. But uh, you have a GitHub. You can see kind of all the projects. I think I, uh, I have over 100, 150 different open source projects. Um, and then uh, you can find my blog and stuff at letsautomate.it. So, and uh, quick fact, uh, that is me in the unicorn um, rubber mask or whatever. So, all right, let's get into our talk. All right, so this talk is called Making Miter Attack Actionable. I don't know if anyone is actually familiar with this movie, um, Mars Attack, but that's kind of the theme. So if, you have, if you've not seen it, please, Go watch it. It's, it's a horrible, crazy movie. So over time, right, We in security, we've had a lot of different uh, frameworks kind of prop up um, ways that we've actually uh, tried to solve different problems that, that we're having. You know, the first to, to kind of come in was the, the kill chain, the cyber kill chain, which we're all probably familiar with. 
Um, and it, it worked, it worked well, um, but it wasn't as detailed and it was very open-ended. Um, yes, it, it was kind of a, a foothold that, that, that we've made uh, into that, you know, establishing this kind of uh, framework to, to respond to different events or to understand attackers, but um, we've kind of evolved. And over time, we've actually, you know, evolved into uh, what we know now as MITRE ATT&CK. It is pretty much the uh, de facto standard. Um, ATT&CK, as you can see, stands for Adversarial Tactics, Techniques, and Common Knowledge. Uh, one of the things that we really need to understand as security and as an industry as a whole, hopefully we all know this, but it is just a framework. Uh, ATT&CK is simply a framework to begin to understand how attackers work. Um, I'm gonna go just over a, a brief overview of, of what the MITRE ATT&CK framework is. Most of us are probably gonna be familiar with this, but for those who are not, I think it's a good overview. So MITRE ATT&CK is really broken down into several different object types. And the ATT&CK matrix, so there's different matrix, matrices. There's one for enterprise, uh, mobile, ICS, um uh, there, there's several i just draw in a blank but one of the big things is that we have the individual tactics and these tactics are the column headers that, that you see highlighted there and these are the different uh phases an attacker could uh could do um against a uh, an organization individual whatever and so they go all the way from you know that initial access all the way to defense evasion, discovery, command and control, exfiltration, so on and so forth. And then everything underneath is what we call a technique. And there's sub techniques to, to these, but these techniques are ways that they can actually perform that tactic. So when they're trying to perform uh, or they need to do um, you know initial access or persistence or execution, they can use these techniques to, to achieve that goal. So it's just a really high level, uh, but I wanted to make sure that you understand uh, tactics and what the techniques mean. So like I said, MITRE ATT&CK is simply just a framework. It, it is, um, we, we kind of prescribe it and you know, there's a lot of uh, people that have you know, certifications and all that, but it, it is a framework. And what that means is that you, it is not prescribed. Uh, it is just a uh, described layout or way that you can actually understand um, attackers and ways to defend them. So that means that it is not standard. Uh, it, it is gonna change for every person in every organization. MITRE provides this base framework um, that, that is based on all this data that they have and common knowledge, but um, you can add to it and you can subtract to it based on your um, organization's, you know, risk and, and threats. Um, and so over time, you will add uh, additional, you know, tactics or, or well, mostly techniques um, and actors and different tools and, and software, so on and so forth to that framework uh, to fit your need within your organization. Act, 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 act. All right, I, horrible, horrible joke. Okay, so techniques. Within the MITRE ATT&CK uh, framework, we have the different you know, techniques that we've described, and those have relationships um, to those tactics. They're, they're kind of vice versa, right? A, a tactic can see those individual techniques, and from a technique, you can actually you know, see which tactic it belongs to. There's also mitigations for those techniques that are defined. Um, each technique, not, not each, but a lot of them um, have a um, defined or, or a loosely defined way to mitigate that technique. Um, it is very wordy and um, not complete, but it is, again, a framework you're supposed to build upon it. You also have within techniques relationships to actors or groups or threat actors. Um, and those threat actors are mapped based on data to say, hey, this actor uses these techniques, um, which then you can take that information and say, oh, well, these are the mitigations to stop this actor. 
um, all the way through. So it, again, these huge relationships all within the MITRE ATT&CK framework. There's also two others, and you can see kind of they, they uh, evolve here, actors and which malware they use and what tools they use. Um, but then you can also look at it from um, malware and the techniques that they are used, as well as the tools in which techniques they belong to, which again flows into mitigations or even that, that individual tactic. So hopefully that's clear as mud. Um, it, it is a, a spider web of relationships, but they're basically essentially just these uh, six different components within MITRE ATT&CK. Here's an example of you know, command and scripting. I'm, I'm using PowerShell as the, the baseline because it is you know, pretty common for, for a lot of organizations. Um, PowerShell, you know, they provide this technique and they provide a lot of detail here, but one of the biggest problems is that it is all text-based. Like, how do you actually use this information? For example, you know, if you read through each one of these techniques, you would find something similar, but adversaries can use PowerShell to perform a number of actions, um, so on and so forth. They, they use um, execution of code. They may use the command start process. Um, invoke command is another one. Uh, there's also a lot of tools out there that they list. Um, as well as in, invoking PowerShell.exe or system management automation, so on and so forth. Um, or they use a DLL. All of these wrap around what PowerShell means as a, as a technique. So what this means is that you have to understand PowerShell at this level. And not everyone is going to. And this is one out of, what, 800 different techniques. Um, it, it's just overwhelming, right? We also have different mitigations that they have provided, which is which is awesome, but they're extremely high level, right? Uh, you have antivirus, okay? You know, we, we all pretty much know that we need to do that. Um, disable or remove features, privilege account management. Those are huge topics. Um, just uh, code signing alone um, is not going to, you know, solve. I, I think that code signing is uh, absolutely critical and we can go into that at some other point, but um, privilege account management, disable and remove programs, those are huge, huge features. They also provide detection capability, but again, it's all text-based. Define their own execution policy. Change the policy, may detect malicious use of PowerShell. Okay, great. Uh, monitor for loading artifacts. Turn on PowerShell logging. Okay, we're getting there. An organization can gather execution details for data analytics. Again, great suggestions, and I think that they're rightfully there, but it is how do we actually take all of this information and implement that, all right? There's a, that's a huge capability that we just don't have. And I'm not saying that we're gonna solve that, but hopefully with the projects that I'm gonna talk about, we'll be able to point you further in that direction. It's overwhelming, right? I mean, you're just like mind blown. Hopefully you like that GIF. I hope, hope everyone likes it. Uh, you know, it's just, there, there's tons of information. And again, that is one technique. One technique out of, I think it's 836 or, or last time I, I counted maybe with sub techniques and, you know, and all that. So it's a lot, it's a lot of information. So you have to know each one of those techniques at that level. And that's uh, going to be impossible for, I think, anyone um, to, to know that information. So one of the questions that you have to, yeah, um, one of the questions that you have to ask is yourself is, you know, are you prepared to be attacked? Most organizations are going to say no. Um, what visibility do you have? What capabilities do you know from your defensive uh, posture, as well as, you know, how well are you prepared just for that one technique? So how do you actually protect ourselves, you know, from these individual techniques? And these are gonna be just basic questions that, that we're going to kind of go over in a little bit of detail. So, but part of the problems that, that we have within um, 
MITRE ATT&CK and any other kind of framework is that you must have deep technical knowledge about that technique. Uh, whether it's uh, process hollowing, uh, OS credential dumping, uh, PowerShell, or any other kind of technical or technique that's listed, you have to understand it at its core level. And that's extremely, extremely hard to do, no matter what. You also have to identify from your organization's perspective, what kind of coverage do you have? What defensive tools or logging or reporting do you have around that technique? Can you detect that technique? And how, uh, how, how much can you detect that technique? So with PowerShell, it's extremely hard, right? Um, yes, you could detect PowerShell being used, but you have to have a lot of different logging and a lot of different um, capabilities kind of monitored. So what is your confidence level on identifying uh, PowerShell being used in a malicious way within your organization? It's extremely hard to, to quantify, um, to, to understand. And so you have to, again, have that deep technical knowledge and then translate that into you know, how, how our organization defends against that certain attack. Along with that, is that you also build SIM detections, you know, to hopefully, you know, have coverage against that. that that's the typical way, right? You, you have a Elastic or Splunk or whatever, you know, identifying these, or maybe it's just your EDR or your firewall rule, whatever it is, you, you're building those kind of repository of ways to identify malicious actors within your environment. And so all of this is, you know, extremely complex, right? It, it's not easy by, by any means. I mean, everyone knows that, that it's not easy. Even if every vendor in the world says that it is, it is not, I, I guarantee you it isn't. Um, there's only a handful of organizations that I know are actually, you know, doing this well. Um, and um, many just don't have a, the data they need or the, the time or the staff or anything to actually, you know, build these detections and help protect themselves. So how do we use, you know, MITRE ATT&CK? Well, well, we'll talk about that. So where do we, where do we start? Do you Google things? Yeah, most people probably are gonna do that, right? I mean, we're going to go from, you know, hey, how does PowerShell work? Um, where we're gonna look at, you know, Google, we're gonna keep searching like, hey, how can I detect this type of attack or, or whatever it is. Um, you may get, gather information from tips or from threat reports or whatever within your organization. You may just like ask a friend, like call them up, you know, maybe you're on Slack or Twitter or wherever, and you're like, hey, how are you detecting this? Or maybe someone else has already provided rules that you can use, like Sigma and, and a few other tools out there. You know, that, that's, a, that's, that's a great way to start. Um, you have to know, you know, what kind of visibility you have again and uh, all those other questions, but those are a great way to start. But again, we cannot understand this at the scale of whatever amount of techniques are out there. So we need some help and we need to actually try to translate this data into something that, that makes it actionable. Um, yes. Great definition. I love MITRE ATT&CK. I love what MITRE is doing. I think they're an awesome organization with all the tools and stuff that they're doing. I, it just, it's hard to take that data and how do you make it actually, you know, usable in your environment right now? Uh, I'm not going to say we're going to solve that today, but we are going to get a, a step closer for sure. So I would like to introduce, if you have not heard of these two tools, uh, PI attack, P-Y-A-T-T-C-K, and PS attack, uh, just the same, P-S-A-T-T-C-K. Um, this, these two tools are both open source. Uh, I released them under the, the swim lane banner, but I'm the primary or the only person really committing to them. Um, they, it provides actionable and I think contextual data from a lot of different sources uh, about actors, techniques, and tools all within the MITRE ATT&CK framework. And so it gives you a little bit of a leg up and, and I'll explain what, how, um, well, right now. So for a technique, a technique 
is, you know, again, a, a way that an actor can perform a certain uh, function or a tactic within um, their attack phase. So this is just one example, and we're going to use a registry. Um, but how do I know if a registry query that is done uh, is malicious in an organization? These are just, again, sample questions that, and there's probably many, many more uh, about a very specific technique, but how how do you know if that registry query is malicious? Um, you have to know a lot about registry and you have to know a lot about Windows. And how do I look for a malicious registry query? Mm, again, a lot of research, a lot of um, digging around, understanding uh, and knowing what to look for. And how do I actually detect it? Well, that, you know, again, extremely hard to do. All of these are extremely hard to do. You have to have a lot of knowledge. And this is for, again, one technique um, out of the, the whole bunch. But when we look at the first kind of question, when we say, how do I know if a registry query is malicious? So typically they're going to use reg query or CMD or PowerShell or or whatnot. And it's hard to understand if, if you don't understand, you know, command shell, PowerShell, all the other different ways that you can perform that uh, potential, you know, attack. You so what we provided uh, well with PyAttack and, and PS attack is the ability to look up potential commands around individual techniques within MITRE ATT&CK. We've um, utilized data from, I think it's now 14 and it's growing uh, different open source tools and identified like Atomic Red Team. Um, uh, there's there's a uh, Zeek rules, there, there's other, you know, a lot lots of different tools that basically will collect and provide us contextual data on top of that technique. So you have all the information that's available from MITRE, but then we say, okay, if I wanna look at potential commands, I could just run a, a single command and say, okay, these are some things that, that I can look at. They're not gonna be 100%, it's not gonna be foolproof, but it gives you, again, that additional context to kind of make a decision or to have a place to, to begin to look at. The other way that I like to think of this is that if I'm just learning, if I'm new to security and I am wanting to know a little bit more about that technique, if I ran this command, then I can start digging in and, and understanding what they're talking about when, when that description and, and all the data around it is presented to me. So I can begin to learn quite a bit more and then understand, okay, I know what HKLM is. Um, or I know it, uh, HK current user um, or local machine or whatever it is, I know what those are. And so it kind of builds again, that knowledge base as well as you can automate this further and, and actually um, take these queries and then query against them in your, um, your SIM or wherever else. So how would you actually look for a malicious registry query? Well, because we've used a lot of different uh, open source tools and we've provided that, that additional context, um, we provided different queries from those, or those different tools and you can kind of access them all from the, the command line. Um, so we have some Azure Sentinel queries for um, malicious registry queries. We have uh, other, well, there's two different uh, Azure Sentinel ones, um, but there's also, uh, I don't know, we're a threat hunting book. Yeah, it's from there, um, so on and so forth. So you, you can see all of this information and it's easily accessible to, to use right from your um, command shell. There's also, you know, the question that we've asked is how do I detect it next time? Well, because of the different data sources, uh, they, they've kind of uh, established a little bit better uh, data source and then the latest version of MITRE ATT&CK, which is awesome. but from those third party uh, tools like LogMD, um, so on and so forth, we actually can see what it may be event lines uh, or event IDs that we may do may start to look at when it comes to detection. So again, this just gives you a insight into how you can actually perform some of these actions. So it is a, I, I like to call it a, a training or a learning tool, 
but it's also a way that you could take this further and automate it, I think, uh, fairly, fairly easily if you're um, familiar with, with Python or PowerShell. Okay. So let's look at actors. Uh, actors are another, you know, a vector that we're going to look at that we provide, again, that, that additional contextual data. And some of the questions that we may uh, ask ourselves when we're looking at a threat actor or someone that may target our organization is that, like, how do you know? How do you know at a, who, who an actor actually targets and what are their past maybe uh, operations that they've performed? Um, when I mean operations, I mean um, certain targets or campaigns that they have performed or have been associated with. Does an actor have any aliases uh, or and, uh, where are they located, right? What country or what region are they located? That, that all matters uh, when it comes to um, attribution. Also, what tools may an actor use? And uh, can I get any other additional links or, or data points? Um, and we provide all, all this kind of um, data Again, as contextual data on top of what MITRE is provided. Uh, also fun, this will be removed, I think, in the next version, uh, but it actually generates this ASCII art <laughs> of the, the actor name because I was like, uh, why the hell not? Um, I just thought it was a fun thing. So, uh, yes, they both include that generated ASCII art. So, LOL. <laughs> so, Questions, again, we'll go into a little bit of the details, but what, who does an actor target and what are their past operations? So operations, you can see clearly OPM, the Anthem hack, and OP Poison Hurricane. But who they focus on, this actor, um, they focus on these kind of targets. This is additional information that, that is not typically provided by MITRE ATT&CK. This is scoured from, again, all those open source tools, that we provide that, that contextual data easily at, at your fingertips. Um, so if you're not probably within the realm of, of these kind of general targets, then maybe your threat landscape against that, that actor is, is different for someone that, that is, if, they, if you are in aerospace or energy or, or healthcare. So does an actor have any other aliases? Um, you can see the alias listed here, um, as well as where they're uh, supposedly um, identified uh, to be located. So, and you can have a, you know other comments, and there, there's other data in there as well. I just kind of wanted to give you a high level of what an actor additional context are, are given. Also, what tools? Um, so there's a lot of tool relationships when we come to, to MITRE ATT&CK that, that are already there, like Mimikatz, and, but, but there's others that, that aren't, are not part of MITRE ATT&CK that, that we can actually attribute based on other resources or other uh, data points. So we have att additional attribution links besides the ones that uh, MITRE has provided, as well as a list of other tools that we can use or that they have been known to use. Again, providing that additional contextual data to, to make a better decision going forward. So with tools, um, we actually, overall, there, there's, we do expand upon what the tools are, are identified as, but most of the data that, that we currently provide are based on uh, the C2 matrix. I don't know if anyone is familiar with C2 matrix, uh, I think it's c2matrix.com or .org. Don't quote me on that. Um, but um, it is a uh, it was an open source project that basically lists out all the features and functionality of different uh, command and control products or tools um, out there. And so we bring that data in, and we can actually visualize or or access that data. Um, so for, this one is for uh, Posh C2. Um, we can see like license and what operating systems they work for and what ports they support and so on and so forth around that tool. Uh, again, on all of this data doesn't provide, uh, isn't a hundred percent, you know, every technique is going to have data, extra data, or every actor is not going to have data because if the data is not there, we just don't know it, but a lot of them will. And so you, you can access this data as, uh, as it's available. 
And we're uh, I'm continually expanding, trying to find new data sources. So if you have some, send me like ping me, uh, create an issue in the repo or whatever, and 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 I'll give you links for all that. But I'll add them as soon as I can. Again, thank you to everyone out there. Um, man, all of these open source tools are currently what we're using um, to, to actually generate the, this contextual data. So none of that would actually be possible with, without the, these teams uh, and without these people um, actually you know, providing the, this data back out there. Um, we, on a biweekly uh, basis, we will actually go and, and scour and collect all this data in a, in a JSON format that then is um, synced or, or used within PyAttack um, to actually um, add that contextual data to MITRE ATT&CK techniques, actors, or tools. So thank you again to all these people. They're awesome. Uh, if Go follow, go look at these repos. They're, they're amazing resources. Um, and we continue to add more as time goes on. All right. So now we're going to head into demo time. Um, be fair warned, you know, I haven't really set up my environment here, so we'll, we'll see how this goes. So, uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll talk about, I think PyTech is probably the most um, con consistently updated um, and probably the most useful for a lot of people. So I'm going to start with PyTech. All right, so hopefully you can see my screen here. And one of the things that we can um, do here, let me actually just restart that. And we can actually, uh, so I already have it kind of installed, but but if you wanted to go and install PyAttack here, you would just do pip, pip3, uh, whatever you have, install PyAttack. And it, it's pretty pretty straightforward to do. Uh, I'm already using kind of a, a virtual environment here, um, so I'm gonna just do it this way. And uh, but it, it's similar to, to how it work there. So the cool thing about PyAttack is that it is both a command line tool, meaning a CLI interface that you were probably typically used for, uh, used to as well as it can be importable. When I mean importable, I mean you can integrate it into your own like Python scripts uh, and all that. Both uh, same functionality, um, just different ways of handling. And we have documentation around both. But um, let's say, so if I already have, um, so I'm using PyMD if you're not familiar, but um, I'm actually going to go with Enterprise. So we can say, okay, for PyAttack, I want to actually just run PyAttack. And what it's going to do is it's actually downloading in the background, it's first time running, um, downloading some of this data, and it's actually going to throw some help here. I say that. Ooh, did I break something already? Yep, I think I broke something already. What is going on? All right. Believe me, it, it does work. Come on, help. Awesome. All right, well. Of course, this is going to break right at the demo. Okay, so with PyAttack, you can actually, you know, import a lot of this data um, and, you know, make it uh, accessible. Let me first go into. I'm just going to create a new test file here. Mm. There we go. Finally, went. I don't know why my computer is being slow, uh, but. So when you when you run um, typically PyAttack, you know, and you do kind of the, the help or or an error is thrown, whatever, it'll actually print out the the help for you, and it gives you a synopsis, you know, a, a description. Um, you can actually access, you know, pre-attack, enterprise, mobile, and ICS, 
um, all through this, this interface. And so you can access those individual tactics, techniques, uh, mitigations, you know, properties. Um, there's examples in here uh, of how you can use it. Um, so you can just copy and paste. Um, you can, uh, and this is all kind of the, the integration. And again, um, these are the different uh, main frameworks that we support. Uh, basically, I think all of them, but uh, enterprise, ICS, mobile, and pre-attack. Um, and you can actually, from there, run uh, kind of an update command, or you can access those individual um, components. So let's look at enterprise, and then we could say techniques. Uh, I'm just going to do the first one. And so there, there's a little bit of a, you know, some some language uh, on the command line that that you basically can print out, you know, the first technique. Here's the entire uh, dictionary or, or JSON uh, of that uh, data. But then you can say, okay, I just want to get the name of that first technique, right? Um, and it will go and, and start pulling that information. And it's the access token manipulation. But let's say we want um, command list. We could say, I'm, I'm just using number five. I don't even know which one that is. May have data, may not. Um, yeah, doesn't. So let's look at, um, let's look at that version. And all these properties are kind of defined. And, and if we actually hit an error, it'll, it'll actually you know show you that. But um, here we can say for you know access token manipulation, um, these are potential different commands. These are for um, MSF. Um, these are different um, plugins. Let, let's say from for Menace White, but um, you can actually look at those individually. Um, but if I wanted to look at uh, the techniques, but I want to say what actors are are using that. Right. And so we could say for that first technique, we're going to list out every single actor uh, that, that uses that um, individual um, uh, technique. So we can just print their name or the different properties, um, so on and so forth. So you can do this across all the different uh, relationships and you can uh, kind of nest things in there. There's also this is where I was trying to, I just didn't wait. Um, there's enterprise search techniques. So you can also search different techniques. What this is going to do, it's going to actually return something back to me and it's going to say, um, hey, you need to provide uh, one or more of these parameters when searching. You can provide, and it's kind of a little hard to read, so let me see if I can zoom in there. Um, you can provide any of these properties, and here are all the different properties that, that may be available. There, there's probably even more. Um, so with that being said, you can say, uh, give me the techniques, uh, but give me a name and with a bit in it. So I want all the techniques that, that have uh, bit in the name of that technique. Um, blah, blah, blah. All right, so we got two techniques. Um, we have T1197 or T1490. Um, and you can see they both have bit in the name. Um, and you can search based on, uh, let's say, give me the techniques with the command list PowerShell. All the techniques that, that have uh, a command that within it has PowerShell. And you can see all those different attack techniques that we can look right there. And those are, um, you know, all the different potential, um, you know, techniques uh, out there that we have uh, those that external or contextual data for. But let's say uh, we want to go back and we're gonna say enterprise techniques. Um, all right, let's see you. I'm just gonna I'm gonna try this because I don't know if <laughs> I don't know which techniques what. Uh, I'm trying to improve this now as far as like that indexing, but it, it's a little hard. But um, the techniques right now, so we were saying for the second technique in our list, 
and give me the command list. And this is the entire command list for that technique. And you can see net user, uh, and every single one of these on a, on a line is a, is a different command. Um, a lot of these are from, you know, Atomic Red Team, or they may be from, you know, those other projects. Um, but we can see, you know, groups of, of um, you know, individual commands that we could use now, copy, paste, do whatever the heck we want um, to actually, you know, build that out and um, make it a little bit more, um, you know, contextual. And we can even feed these into other commands that, that we may, may want to query Elastic or Splunk or wherever. Uh, so exact, we looked at techniques. Um, again, you can do, um, let's say like actors and um, let's do ASCII logo, because why not? And, and a lot of the, the tool is supposed to be a starting point to build other tools, right? This gives you the raw data. This gives you all the data that you need. Now, what I really want is someone to go out there and actually, um, you know, take time, because I just don't have time, um, to take this and go forward and, you know, make query languages out of these, these commands. Um, you know, provide that, that additional uh, data extraction, maybe even create rules within your organization. Uh, all of it's possible, but now that you actually have the data, you can begin to use that. So you can see this is APT1. Um, APT um, if you look at the name. And we'll say APT1, but then you also have like their tools. You know, what tools do they use? Or, and it's kind of a, you know, a, a lot of data that's kind of thrown at you and that that's on purpose is because we want to show you, you know, everything about it. Um, it it's hard to kind of format it in a, in a certain way, but, but we're, we're um, always up for um, uh, people to, to contribute. Oh, I meant, sorry. Jeez. Uh, tools, name, um, push C2. So if I just wanted to look for, you know, that, that single tool, what it'll do is it'll actually go out there and, re oh, I said that. Mm. So we have posh C2, we have S, you know, S0378. Uh, we can actually take that and pipe that into to something else to extract all of the uh, JSON. I was trying to make it a little bit better as far as a display, but again, you have access to all of that. So now let's look at, you know, if you were using it from a perspective of, um, you know, within let's say a tool within your um, your own tool, um, you can actually import and you have a lot of different options here. So what I'm gonna show you is that I have imported uh, this tool from, once I have installed uh, from PyAttack, import attack. And if, I, if you're using Visual Studio Code, I, which I recommend, you can see all the different options here. Um, there's a lot of different options, uh, but, and it has all this kind of data here uh, that, that you can look into. But the main things are, do you want nested sub-techniques? Uh, right now, all techniques are, are potentially you know, nested within there. So if you look at a technique, you can see your sub-techniques, or you can flatten them all out. Just all of them are techniques. Um, you can actually save a config um, and save that data locally or reference different files locally. So maybe you can't go over the internet or, or whatever else it is, uh, or you have your own modified version of different attack JSONs. Um, you can use that, kind of supported all that. Um, as well as uh, there's there's some other like config options, file pass. Um, do you wanna you know, save different data wherever it's located? So FYI, I just usually do, I want all the techniques or uh, all sub-techniques to be kind of one, you know, main list. 
And so to use it, it's actually really straightforward. Uh, so I can say for every actor uh, in uh, my attack enterprise actors, then I can just print out its name, ID, then I can look up relationships. So I can say, okay, for these actors, let's print out all the malware um, and uh, you know have the malware ID. We can look at their tools and what techniques they use. Um, so I am going to take this and I'm gonna show you what I mean. And in here, I'm just gonna clear that. But I'm going to test upon. And what we're going to do is we're going to go out. It's going to print some data here, and we'll see it. But um, it's going to go out and, and iterate through each one of those. So it's a lot of data. Again, we're, we're dumping tons and tons of data because that was kind of the, the intention. Let me actually modify that real quick. I'm just going to stop doing the controls and, yeah. I think that's what's printing out all that data. Mm. It's printing out. Well, that's just my, my test script. But we can see the technique ID, obfuscate the files and formats. We can see the actual attack data source. Uh, this is the new uh, data sources from um, MITRE ATT&CK. But then we can also see uh, different commands right here is a huge command list that, that we can look at. Actually, I think that might be what's, yeah, here we go. Sorry, guys, I'm going to do this because I want to show you what I mean. And then we'll switch, switch gears. So with uh, PyTAC, so I just put in like a, a pause statement in here, but uh, it'll go through and it, it'll list um, first and we'll kind of follow along here. We have the actor ID, the actor name, and then we have the malware uh, ID as well as its name. And so we have a couple of them, you know. Um, then we have a tool and the, if there was any, and then we have the technique. So the technique, um, we have the technique ID and the name, spear, spear phishing attachment, and we have data sources. After that, though, we have the individual uh, command list. Rahul, I know it's kind of hard to see there. I should have, I can print it out better, but uh, we have the raw command data that, that have retrieved. Uh, if there was queries, they would be there, um, as well as data sets themselves. And Possible detections are somewhere in, actually, that might be one of these lines. So you you have all of this data kind of, um, you know, out there for you that, that it's totally accessible. Uh, we actually map NIST, uh, NIST 800, whatever, um, controls uh, to different techniques. So you can actually visualize them from, from that perspective as well. Um, you can iterate over the controls, the data sources, and you can do this across uh, every single ICS, mobile, enterprise, um, so on and so forth, different frameworks, and there are different components. And it's all, there's a big test file out in the repo. Uh, it's in a bin folder and it's just called test.py. It's the same one. Um, and you'll be able to just run that and just see all the data that, that you can get access to. Uh, plus there, there's more, but, uh, the additional context data that, that I'm at, um, MITRE ATT&CK right now is like 23 megs is, is the, how big, you know, MITRE ATT&CK's their JSON file or whatever. Um, the contextual data is 36, um, so it adds quite a bit additional data on top of what MITRE is already provided. All right, so let me get this terminal back here, and we're going to switch on over to PyATT&CK. Or PS attack. So with PS attack, uh, it's pretty similar if you're familiar with uh, PowerShell or not. Um, but we can uh, stop. So I'm just gonna I'm doing, I know delete. So we're we're in PowerShell. I'm in PowerShell core. Um, what we're gonna do is I'll actually close that 
And you can install this if you have PowerShell uh, 7 or, or above, um, PowerShell Core uh, on Windows or Mac or, or Linux. Um, but you can actually um, go ahead and you know install it with like install module uh, name PS attack. Um, but since I'm all local, I'm going to do um, actually import it. Or you can you know actually download it and, and import it if you want. Um, but once we have actually imported it, then there's a couple different um, get module is what I meant. Oh. So, and we can, I haven't used a, used a PowerShell in a while, but these are the different uh, functions that are available. Um, you can get attack, you can get attack actors, uh, malware, their tactics, techniques, tools, and there's some other helpers here. But the main ones are going to be that. Um, with like get attack, um, I can actually uh, let's see, get help, get attack, and you can see there's a lot of different options. Uh, is meant as an entry point for all the MITRE attack data. Um, you can actually filter by different uh, types, uh, different objects, and uh, some other stuff. But probably the coolest stuff. Um, let's say I'm just going to get into uh, like after. Uh, if I wanted to actually, um, and you can see I'm not typing, see my hand right here. Uh, I'm actually just going to hit tab. And what it's going to do is it actually has auto completion and it'll list out um, all the different uh, pre populated uh, commands there for all the attack. Uh, actor names. So for every actor out there, um, there's actually a name here. You can actually do it uh, by sorry, get attack actor by ID as well. And I say, hey, do you want them? And here are all the different IDs for each one of them. So it's all auto completion uh, for you. So if you say, all right, give me G zero nine, I don't know, nine nine. Uh, it'll return uh, that object, and it's all formatted for you, all nice and pretty. Uh, but here's the actual uh, data that is contained within it. Um, so you have different attribution links, other known tools, their targets. Uh, again, when we looked at, is it revoked? What other country, if it's known? Um, other descriptions provided by uh, MITRE, and then we have some other, you know, MITRE data all kind of listed in here. Um, you can do this as well for uh, techniques. So you can just say name, and it'll say, uh, it's gonna take a minute, because uh, there's like 800, like I said, um, in there, so <laughs> it's, it's loading them all. Uh, I wish it was a little bit quicker, but the JSON is massive. Uh, and probably my computer is slow as hell. I'm getting a new one. Um, yeah, so once we actually get those techniques, then we can actually um, perform and, and kind of iterate through them. If you just ran like get attack technique or get attack actor or malware, it'll just print them all. Um, it'll be a lot and it'll be hard, but you could use them in other programs and other, you know, command line, whatever. Um, it's all out there and available. Uh, this newest version I actually just um, published um, yesterday. So um, it has this new kind of auto completion out there, uh, but you have the name and um, we can actually look at, sorry, I just wanna do one and then we'll kind of wrap up here. Uh, let's go. I'm going to do PowerShell. I think that's who. Jeez. And again, we can select all of them. It's a lot more data, as you can see. Um, but each one of these are properties. So you can see the permissions used for PowerShell. And here's the, the massive command list for PowerShell, which is probably going to be one of the bigger ones um, from all those different open source tools that you can uh, use. So if I wanted to select the man, then I can actually 
Oh, man. I'm like typo city over here. See this huge list of different commands for PowerShell. Um, and each one of them is pretty much a line uh, that you can actually go through and, and use for your own heart's uh, desires. So, um, again, you can access all that as well as if you just wanted to get help for like techniques. Um, and it will kind of provide examples and um, if you do full, it'll actually give you all the different examples and how you can use it and so on and so forth. So uh, again, you install it by doing like install module and then the, the name PS attack. Um, and uh, same with uh, Py attack, you do pip, uh, pip install Py attack. So I already have it installed, so that's why. Um, all right, so let me get back. So a lot of the documentation, um, it should, so we, I actually have a, I wanted to demo it. Uh, I didn't get to it. I see some comments in, in chat um, about a visualize. I do have a Docker container that visualizes all this data. Um, I just haven't actually pushed public on it. Uh, it renders it all using MongoDB in the background and allows you to do some other stuff. Um, hopefully I'll get to that this month. Uh, it's just time and uh, I've done it. It's mostly complete documentation and all that stuff at that point. But again, you could uh, look at the documentation. Uh, if you actually wanna see uh, full rendered data of, of this data, it's a little, I gotta update it to the latest latest, but um, it's pretty close and you can actually um, do the github um, swimlane.o.github.io slash attack uh, pi attack again you can install and there's a uh, read the docs uh, docs page out there as well as in the, the repo and same with ps attack um, also finally i just want to mention there is another tool that i just released it's called atomic operator uh, it's around uh, atomic red team if you're familiar with it or not uh, go check it out. It's a Python execution framework for Atomic Red Team, and it can run uh, commands locally and remotely across any operating system. So go check it out. Uh, I know I'm a, probably a little bit long, but um, any questions? Or I guess I can hand it over. All right, Josh. Yeah, thanks so much for doing that. We did have some questions in GoToWebinar. Um, oh, okay. That kind of came through. Let me get over there. Hopefully, I didn't go too long. No, it's fine. And you can always hang around in the Discord if you're yeah, if we'll you're be. able to for a little bit and answer any questions that people may have. I wanted cool. to try and get the. Um, the ones from GoToWebinar that I could see, but I don't know why it's not. Oh, here we go. Sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll be in there. I'll kind of go through the chat history or okay. whatever. I see there's like a hundred and something messages or something. It looks like um, somebody said, gosh, I'm going to probably butcher this. Okay. I've tried enabling PowerShell script block logging in a small subset of machines. I found mm -hmm. it to be quite noisy and not feasible to implement across our environment. Is there a way to log PowerShell commands via Sysmon? Um, man, I, I don't know. Uh, I would imagine so. I mean, it is process creation, um, but you're not gonna get as detailed uh, info, I don't believe, unless you're using PowerShell logging, especially with ob obfuscation. But um, there is a uh, malware archeology span that has a cheat sheet out there. He's awesome guys. Um, I, I know them, I've known him for years. Uh, I think I actually helped, I think. <laughs> it's been a while uh, with the, the logging one for PowerShell, but um, they have cheat sheets basically that, that help you kind of step through what you need to enable and what you can enable to, to get visibility. If you haven't seen it, it's a great cheat. Um, I'll actually post a link uh, in, in the Discord chat uh, in a little bit, but um, yeah, it's, it's an awesome. As far as uh, Sysmon and, and PowerShell, man, I haven't, um, I haven't looked at that in the past 
couple of years. So I, I'm not 100% sure off the top of my head. Okay. Uh, is there a way to organize attribution data that is a solid approach? Oh, um, I don't know if I quite understand that question, but um, the there's there's ways to organize it. I, I don't know it it it's a confidence level at that point. I don't know of any tools that allow you to set that confidence on, on those uh, on attribution. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm answering that question right or if I under if I'm quite following. So. Um, and for those of you that are asking the questions in, in GoToWebinar, if you didn't get your questions answered, uh, try and go over to the Discord server. It's just a little easier over there yeah. um, to, to see the, the questions, especially if you, if you tag, um, tag Josh in the questions. Yep. So let's see. Josh, we want to thank you so much for coming on today and, and giving us this valuable information. Um, we really appreciate it. We hope to see you back on another um, Hacking Cast in the near future. We'd love to host you again. Yeah, this was fun. Uh, yeah. You know, I I think you all are awesome. So <laughs> I think everything that you know, Wild West, and you know, everything is what you all do is is awesome. So I'm glad to be a part of it. I, I call it the you know I'm I was a huge fan of DerbyCon, and you know when it kind of shut down. It, well, this is my uh, new derby gun, for sure. Well, that's oh, fantastic. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Josh, if you want to stick around in the Discord and answer okay. those um, questions, that would be fantastic. Um, and again, we really appreciate you being on today. Yeah. Uh, we thank appreciate you. everyone that showed up today as well. Um, just a reminder, um, if I get all the information, we'll have a a hacking cast next week um, that will be presented by Nathan Sweeney and Kevin Johnson uh, with Secure Ideas. So we hope to see you then. Uh, we hope you have a great rest of your week. And uh, thanks again for showing up uh, to our hacking cast. Uh, just a reminder, we have some awesome anti-siphon training coming up. Uh, if you have a chance, go over and take a look at our, our website. Um, and also don't forget about Wild West Hacking Fest way west it's going to be a great event uh, i'm working on the contract right now with uh, the midway and um, i'm going to do a special event on the midway uh, so it should be a lot of fun so awesome. um, and for those of you that joined us uh, for the hacky cast today and you registered through the normal registration link and not through the live stream you will receive a uh, certificate of completion uh, tomorrow afternoon around this same time that's all, all right. I had. Housekeeping stuff. Did you have all right. Well, again? thanks again, everybody. Yep. All right. Thank have you. a great day, everyone. Thanks so much. Yep. Bye bye.